Well, blessings to you. Here we are, episode 75 of Why Christians Should Keep the Law. And today we are going to continue to talk about the Sabbath and connect more dots to help us appreciate and understand how did we get here today, where evangelical Christianity is at, where even Roman Catholicism is at in regard to the fourth commandment. Why do we believe what we believe? And so with that said, I'm actually going to bring... The, the, the Catholic Catechism to the Table. Now, this is a, a really a comprehensive work of everything from the whys to the hows and to the these and the thous. Uh, everything you want to know about Catholicism, all the, all the traditions in, in Roman Catholicism, the prayers, the, 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 the Eucharist, the sacraments, everything is embedded in here. Um, and within this book, It talks about the Sabbath, and it talks about why they have abandoned the Sabbath. And so I want to take us to number 2174, and this is where we're going to start. And we read the following. We all gather on the day of the sun. And I just want to stop here. Notice the terminology that's being used here. We gather on the day of the sun, obviously referring to this as the short form of sun day. Well, here's the, here's the thing about this. Historically, pagan cults revered the sun. They worshiped the sun. And it was, this is where even we got this, this name, sun day, is because on the first day of the week, this was, in a sense, the pagans' Sabbath. This is when they worshiped. In fact, to help you appreciate this, we can go to uh, Dr. Gilbert Murray's commentary on this very thing. Listen to the words that he says here. Mithraism had so much acceptance that it was able to impose on the Christian world its own Sunday in place of the Sabbath. Its son's birthday, the 25th of December, as the birthday of Jesus. And and so the the professor recognizes that paganism had such a great influence that it crept into the Christian faith, and the Christian faith actually assimilated to paganistic ideas. First and foremost, the recognition and, and, and the sanctification of Sunday. Which is, which is what Mithra, the, the, the worshipers of Mithra did. And furthermore, is it any coincidence that today many people celebrate, you know, many Christians celebrate what they call Christmas, and it happens on December 25th. Well, well, here's the little secret. Jesus was never born on December 25th. That much is absolutely clear. And scholars, even Christian scholars across the board, recognize Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. Well, where did that come from? I'll tell you where it came from. It came from a pagan cult, from Mithraism. This is the day that he was celebrated as being brought into the world. And so as we go back and we look at 2174 and these opening words that we all gather on the day of the sun, you have to understand the language is significant here. And then it goes on, for it is the first day after the Jewish Sabbath but also the first day when God separated matter from darkness, made the world, and on the same day, Jesus Christ, our Savior, rose from the dead. And so this is interesting. Does it, what we just read, does that at all sound familiar? Well, it should, because these are the words of Justin Martyr. And we read these words in his dialogue with Trivia. This, is, this was Justin Martyr's explanation of why Christians no longer keep the Sabbath. And so I, w- I want you to understand something. I want you to see this. This is so important. The fundamental basis by which the Catholic Church, and then by extension Protestantism, has based their observance and of, of honoring Sunday at the expense of the Sabbath is not based upon the book of Acts or upon the Gospels or upon the epistles of Paul or or James or Peter. It's not based on the New Testament. There's no scripture for this. The fundamental basis for supporting this 
by the traditions of men, men that rose up after. I mean, we're talking late first, early second century and started espousing a doctrine that you cannot support in scripture. Now, moving forward, going to 2175, we read this. Sunday is expressly distinguished from the Sabbath, which it follows chronologically every week. For Christians, its ceremonial observance replaces that of the Sabbath. And so here you can see the clear position, at least from Roman Catholicism's uh, position. They say when you observe Sunday, it replaces that of the Sabbath. And so the Sabbath is gone. And now it's the first day of the week. Continuing, those who lived according to the old order of things have come to a new hope, no longer keeping the Sabbath, but the Lord's day in which our life is blessed by him and by his death. Again, just stop. Do those words sound familiar? Again, they're giving the, they're, they're explaining, this is why we've abandoned the Sabbath for Sunday. You'll notice there's no scriptural quote here. These are the words of Ignatius in his letter to the Magnesians, which we already covered. This is the basis by which the Catholic Church is supporting its position to abandon the Sabbath. It doesn't come from the New Testament. It comes from Justin Martyr. It comes from Ignatius. And again, I tell you, that should trouble you. It, it troubles me. Now, moving ahead, I want to take you to 348. Listen to, this is Catholic commentary. This is incredible. They say, the Sabbath is at the heart of Israel's law. Now, I want you to take that in. The Sabbath is at the heart of Israel law. They recognize that it's a centerpiece of the Ten Commandments, that it's a centerpiece of lifestyle. It's the very heart of the law. And then he go on to keep the commandments is to correspond to the wisdom and to the will of God as expressed in his work of creation. Now, I got to tell you, I agree with every single word that is spoken here. In fact, this is just beautiful wisdom articulated. It is true to keep God's commandments. It is to correspond to his wisdom and to his will. This is, a, this is just a scriptural fact. But unfortunately, as we continue into 349, everything derails. Then we read this. But for us, a new day has dawned, the day of Christ's resurrection. So they get done ex making this profound statement that scripturally is totally on point and supported and then totally derail. But for us, a new day has dawned, the day of Christ's resurrection. And now let, let me say this. Is Jesus's resurrection important? The question is absurd because there is no hope. There is no redemption. There's no forgiveness of sins. There is no getting into the kingdom of heaven apart from Christ's resurrection. It very much so. Christ's story. The basis of Jesus, his death, burial, resurrection is all encompassing in our faith. Without it, there is nothing. And therefore, he truly is the Alpha and Omega, the, the, the beginning and the end. And Satan knows just how instrumental Jesus is to salvation, that he is salvation. And to cultivate a great deceptive work, you better believe he's going to introduce and he's going to bring the holy name of Jesus into the equation and tell you that you should walk away from the commandments of God. You should abandon what God has commanded us for the name of Jesus, for the sake of what Jesus did. But when you actually sit, sit back, and you start to ponder this, that's absurd. I can't honor Jesus through rebelling against Jesus. 
It's a contradiction. It doesn't even make sense. It's insane. Just because you want to wrap rebellion in the wrapping paper of Jesus's glorious work, you are mixing two different thoughts entirely that cannot and should not be mixed together, mixing the holy with the profane. God have mercy. May that never be. Now, let me build on this. I want to take you to the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine. And I love this because it goes through this question and answer uh, kind of formula. And they ask in a question form, which day is the Sabbath day? And the answer is, well, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Well, and then the question arises, well, why then do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? What is the answer? Well, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church, with the Council of Laodicea, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Now, I want you to understand, the Catholic Church is not shy. It doesn't blush over the issue or over the fact that they, in their authority, have transferred the day, the holiness, the sanctity from Saturday to Sunday. In a very real way, what the Catholic Church has done is they stepped in and said, we are God. See, because only God can declare what is holy and what isn't holy. Only God can declare what is clean and what is unclean. Only God can do that. We don't have the power to do that. But the Catholic Church has come on the scene and says, we do have that power, and we did it. Stay tuned. We have more on this very subject. May the Lord bless you and keep you.